Well, hey church, it is so good to be with you today, wherever you are. I am so excited to join with you for church today. Whether this is your first time joining online or maybe you've been here on the journey for a while already, we are so, so glad that you're joining us today. And hey, this is a very, very special Sunday. Last week, we got to hear our global vision for our church for 2022. And this day, today, we're hearing our local vision for South Africa and Africa. So we are so excited that you're here. And hey, we're going to just take a few minutes now. We're going to get together. We're going to lift our voices. We're going to lift our expectation. And we're going to praise and worship the Lord together. Amen. Well, hello and welcome to church. We're so delighted to be with you this morning and have you with us. And today, wherever you're at, we're so grateful you're with us. And before we worship Jesus together, I'd like to encourage you with a scripture. And it's David writing here. And he's, he, he addresses his soul. And in, in Psalm 103, in the Amplified Version, he says, Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is deep within me. Bless His holy name. Again, he says, bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul. And do not forget His benefits, who forgives all our sin, who heals all our disease, who who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your years, with good things. Anybody need any good things this year? 2022 can be a year of good things. So this morning, can we turn our attention to Jesus, wherever you're at, and let's worship Him together. Come on, you can lift your hands, you can lift your voice, but come, be with us. Amen.
Joy come every 
we get to worship together and I, I love that song and I love, I love understanding that God hears us. He hears our needs. He hears our prayers. And right now we're going to take a moment together as a church and we're going to pray. Wherever you are, I don't know exactly what your need is, but I know that God knows your need. We're going to pray. Maybe you're here today and you're praying. You've got financial need. Maybe you're praying for healing. Maybe you're praying for direction this year. Hey, why don't we take a moment together? Wherever you are, you can just lift your hands. You can lift your voice and we're going to pray together. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you are a God who hears our need, Lord. I thank you that you know each and every one of us, Lord. You know the hairs that are on our head. And so right now, God, I lift up these prayers to you, Lord. I, I declare healing, God, in this room today. I declare, Lord, that you are going to bring financial provision this year, Lord. I declare, oh God, that you are in this place, God, and you are moving mountains, oh God. We pray for miracles this year. And God, we thank you that you are the God who hears our prayers. And we just ask that you would lift them up today, Jesus, and take them into your hands. And everybody together, wherever you are, said, Amen. Amen. And as I said, if you have a prayer request, why don't you go ahead? You can pop it down in the chat right now. And we actually have live Zoom rooms where you can connect and have somebody pray with you live today. How awesome is that? It's so, so good. I love it. And hey, if you have a praise report, why don't you go ahead and do that as well? You can pop your praise report. If God is doing something incredible in your life, why don't you tell about us? Tell us about it. We want to hear it. Absolutely amazing. And hey, we're going to take a moment right now. We do this in every service that we have where we come around our giving. And I'm going to introduce our incredible Sebastian. He's going to come and share with us around our giving today. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, church, are you ready to give? You know, God has a vision. And in the book of Joshua, we read about this vision where God says to the children of Israel, you must enter the promised land. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And as you know, in the book of Joshua, the children of Israel fight so many battles. And in chapter 10, we will read right now, where it says that Joshua, they were fighting the southern armies with this vision in mind to enter the promised land. And let me read what it says. It says, On the day the Lord gave 
the Israelites victory over the Amorites. Joshua prayed to the Lord in front of all the people of Israel. He said, listen to this, let the sun stand still over Gibeon and the moon over the valley of Ayalon. So the sun stood still and the moon stayed in place until the nation of Israel had defeated its enemies. Crazy, crazy verse. Imagine the moon st stopping and standing still for God's people to have a victory. The interesting thing here is that they were called the children of Israel. If you know anything about this, they were 12 tribes. Being 12 tribes meant that they were different. They had different views, they had different ways of living, but they believed in God. Church, think about this. We as a church of Hillsong Africa, we are different. We have different tribes, we have different cultures, we have different backgrounds. But just like the children of Israel, if we unite and bring our resources, our strength, and bring our time under this vision to build a church, to build a nation and a continent, we will be able to achieve these great and amazing things for the Lord. So wherever you are right now, just know that you are part of this vision and you can play your part with whatever you have in your pocket and whatever you can give into the house of God. Because doing that, we are building the nation and the continent and everyone in this continent will be able to enter into their promised land because God has given us the mandate to build this nation. Can I pray for you? Let me pray. Father, I thank you so much that every single heart and every single hand that is going to be giving into your house right now, together, God, we are uniting and declaring, God, that this continent, this nation of South Africa, God, will be built because you have given us to go ahead, oh God. I bless every giver and we bless all the hearts of God that are uniting right now together to build your house and to build this vision. We thank you that years from now, God, we will be living and we are living into our promised land. In Jesus' name we thank you come on if you believe it say amen 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 and amen all church there are different ways of giving you see there on the screen find a way that is suitable for you convenient and whatever you're giving into god's house know that you are blessed and god will bless this nation and this continent amen well are you ready for the word of god today we're hearing from pastor phil and lucinda around our local vision for africa for 2022 but before that Pastor Phil would like to extend a personal invitation to you. Church, can I have your attention for one moment? I want to invite you at every one of our locations to our Kingdom Builders and Vision Impactors. We've got an information night coming up for you. We've got information about what it means to be a Kingdom Builder or a Vision Impactor. We would love you to consider this. Our vision impactors, our kingdom builders, are people who believe that part of their purpose, part of their mission is to help resource the vision of our church. As a church, we are committed to building a church that helps build a nation and a continent. And those who are part of our kingdom builders and vision impactors community are people who generously give into this. And it is amazing to see how this community has grown over the years. Maybe it's something for you to consider this year. If you're already a Kingdom Builder or Vision Impactor, we got so much new, fresh information that I believe is gonna encourage you, stir faith in you for this year. You can go to our website, hillsongafrica.com. If you're interested in what does it mean to be a Vision Impactor or Kingdom Builder, go to the website again, hillsongafrica.com. The information's coming up on the screen, plus, at every one of our locations, we're gonna have an information night very soon for you. You can talk to your location pastors about that. But guys, this year, this army, if you will, of amazing people, Kingdom Builders, Vision Impactors, is so core to who we are and what we're about as we take the vision of building church across this beautiful continent of Africa forward. So this year, why don't you consider being a kingdom builder or a vision impactor? God bless you and we'll see you soon. Hi everybody, it is so good to be with you in Africa for our local Vision Sunday. And can we just say that we miss you guys so much. Yeah. We are so proud of you all and what God is doing in our church across Africa. So excited and expectant for this year. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for being here today. We're gonna unpack 
some of this local vision and we wish we were there in person with you. But hey, via the screen, via technology, we are in this together. We're going to build a church that's going to build a nation and a continent across Africa and we're super excited. Absolutely. And church, I want to echo. We echo. always echo. But I want to echo what Phil said and I want to say as well that um, with all of our hearts, we miss being with you today, but we're still with you yeah. and we thank God for technology. Um, but we do miss being with you. Uh, you guys are amazing, but absolutely love your church and really expected and excited about today. And we're believing that the vision for Africa is um, only getting stronger and God is breathing on it only more so. I wanted to read us a, a scripture before I pray, but I read it at Vision Sunday. I think I read it at Vision Sunday. I read it somewhere. But anyway, it's amazing. And it's in Psalm 145. And it just says a simple thing. It says, the eyes of all look expectantly to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and you satisfy the desire of every living thing. And I love this scripture because it says the eyes of all of us look expectantly to Him. And I want to encourage us heading into 2022 vision that we Sunday, keep vision, vision, eyes. Uh, uh, yes, and vi um, vision, heart and soul. What is, yeah. what is it? Vision, well, local, it's, local it's our vision. Local vision, yeah. I want to encourage us to keep our eyes on Jesus, look expectantly to Him this year. And then remember this, that He says, um, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. And can I remind our church as we head into 2022, the year of the Lord's favour, that we serve a God this year or every year actually, who has an open hand. We do not serve a God who has a closed fist, but we serve a God who has an open hand. And so I'm expectant, I'm looking unto Jesus, I'm expectant, I'm trusting that the open hand of God will be upon our church, will be upon your life, will be upon your family. And I believe what God has got in store for us is actually beyond what we can even imagine. And so I'm expectant, so shall I, shall yeah, I pray? Yeah, let's pray. Let me pray for us. So Father, we thank You for today. Lord, we thank you for um, the, your vision. Lord, this isn't just our vision or us articulating something. This is your vision. And Father, we commit it to you. And we say, Father, have your way above and beyond what we can even imagine. Father, do exceedingly abundantly more. And Father, to you be the glory. And Father, we say 2022, let it be our greatest, our most fruitful, Lord, um, the year where we get to know you in a deeper and more real way. The year, Father, where more people see the love and the light of Jesus than ever before. Thank you in advance for all that you're going to do. Bless our church today in Jesus' name. And everybody said together. Amen. 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 Well, my wife is going to go. head off camera for a moment. <laughs> Uh, thank you. And I'm just going to share a few thoughts with you and then unpack a little bit of what our vision looks like locally across Africa. And as we say, hey, what an honour it is. We still are so passionate about what God is desiring to do in Africa. What a fantastic Sunday we had last Sunday, uh, Vision Sunday, and uh, got so many, uh, so much feedback from people, uh, just so encouraged by, you know, we're shared some of the things of what God has been doing in our church in Africa and our passion for college in Africa and things like that. And so we are truly believing that this will be a year 2022 of the Lord's favour. And so I'm going to remind us of where this comes from in God's Word in Luke chapter 4, Jesus speaking in verse 18, says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Turn to someone next to you right now and just tell them, you know what, you are favoured. Just tell them, you're, you're, you're favoured right now. Sometimes it's good just to, just to tell someone. Anyway, bring it back, bring it back. I've got you to speak, now I want you to listen to me. Anyway, here's the thing. The year of the Lord's favour, as I talked about last week, can be interpreted as the year of Jubilee. In Jewish custom, this year of Jubilee was a year where three things uh, were, were established or, or took place. The first is that slaves were set free. So it was all about freedom. 
And we're believing in this year of the Lord's favour for God's freedom over our lives, that we won't be enslaved to things, to, to sin, but we'll be forgiven, we'll be free. And the second thing was debts were forgiven. So there was forgiveness, there's freedom, there's forgiveness. And the third aspect of the year of Jubilee was rest and restoration, which speaks of new beginnings. The land, if you, were, if you had farmland, in the Jewish culture, you would rest that land for the year so that land could be restored so that it would produce even healthier crops, a healthier harvest in the future. All there is three areas, uh, freedom, uh, you know, uh, forgiveness and restoration, rest and restoration, bringing new beginnings. All these three speak of health. And that's what I want to remind us of. As we talked about it on last Sunday to our global church, this is a year where we are believing the Lord's favour will be upon us and He wants us healthy. Why are we all about that? Because as we know, healthy things grow. When something is unhealthy, it's unlikely to grow. It becomes stagnant. Uh, it doesn't produce fruit. Uh, in fact, it, it can die. But when something is healthy, it's going to grow. It's going to produce fruit. Uh, it's going to make a positive difference and contribution. And that's what we're believing for our lives. That's what we're believing for all our church locations, our church family across Africa. So uh, as, as mentioned, forgiveness brings about health. When I understand I'm forgiven, it takes the shame and guilt from me. And when I walk in that forgiveness towards others, again, it removes the bitterness, resentment and and all of that from my heart, and it sets me free. And I, I'm in a healthy place when I live in forgiveness. When I am free, I'm healthy. When I'm free from uh, addictions or when I'm free from oppression, when I'm free from those uh, things that can overwhelm me. And so often there are aspects in life, anxiety and stress and the rest of, uh, you know, the pressures of life can overwhelm us and burden us. But I believe Jesus brings freedom from those things when we live our life in surrender to Him. Freedom brings health. And finally, rest and restoration. Maybe there are people here listening right across our locations and you've been kind of overwhelmed by life and you need to rest in God and you need to allow Him to restore your soul and your spirit, because as you do that, it's bringing health into your being. As it says in 3 John 1 verse 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. We are all about seeing our lives prosper and be in health. And can I remind you guys, we are coming out of this COVID-19 pandemic what a season it has been. Uh, we are dealing with a much changed world. And can I say in the midst of all of that, our vision and passion for Africa is absolutely stronger than ever. We still believe, guys, we all still believe that the church is the hope of the world. We still believe that welcome home is not just a phrase that we say, but the essence of who we are as a church a place where everybody is welcome and everyone can find a home. And we still believe that we're building a church to build a nation and a continent. We believe that we're called to establish and build 50 churches in influential cities across Africa. And we still believe the scripture in Malachi 3.12 that God spoke into Lucinda and my heart many years ago and we believe it's relevant for our church today, or more relevant actually than it ever has been, which says, then all nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. And we believe that for Africa, that the rest of the world will see Africa in a new light. The blessing, the hand, the provision of God upon Africa. Why? because the people of Africa are healthy and strong. Why? Because we believe in building healthy churches that will speak into the lives of generations, young people, right through to older people uh, and see their lives flourish and grow. And ultimately that will impact the community, cities, 
nations that God has called us to. So today, uh, as we unpack this local vision, we're going to talk practically about how we go deeper into living healthy lives. And we're going to consider three key elements to this. We're going to talk about family. We're going to talk about a forward focus, not a forward focus. Although if you have a forward focus, that's a great car. Enjoy it. And number three, we're going to talk about fun. Three key areas that we believe help us this year to be healthy in this year of the Lord's favour. So let's unpack family. What does that look like? Well, if you are in a family and have experienced family as I have, then you would understand there are a whole lot of elements to family, but three key elements, growth or growing, connection and serving. In a family, we grow and we're believing that's going to happen this year. So as a family, sometimes that growth happens because someone challenges you, don't they? You know, we love our family, but there are tension moments, there are conflict moments, but God puts us in family actually to help us to grow through those different moments. Sometimes the tension, the challenge, all of that, what's it doing? It's forcing us to grow, to become more loving, to become more gracious, to become more forgiving. Families do that. They help us to grow. And our church family is the same. There are things that we believe can help you uh, to deal with the blockages. There are blockages to our growth. There are things that stop us growing. Areas where uh, we can get stagnant. And so we want to see you cultivate growth. Just like in a natural family, we want to see you cultivate personal growth in our church family and in your life. So how do we do that? Well, really, guys, one of the massive ways that we do that obviously is growing together in groups, but we have these amazing courses. I've talked about them before. You've heard me speak about them, but we, I can't emphasize enough how important these equipped courses are. Equipped courses help you and me uh, to develop in important areas, to deal with different issues. I think the different groups are, or the different courses are going to come up on the screen. Uh, so you can consider those. We have courses to help you uh, if you've suffered through abuse, we have courses to help you if you've been through the pain of divorce. We have courses to help you if you're you know, parents and you're raising kids and you're going, we don't know how to do this. We can help. We have courses to help you with marriage. If there's challenges in your marriage, we have courses to help you in your finances. Why do we add these things to who we are as a church? Well, because on Sunday, we speak quite broadly to the whole congregation. And that's fantastic, but there are specific issues and areas that we all are dealing with. And if you really want to get healthy this year and you really want to grow, then we all, you know, one of the keys to that is to get honest. And as we get honest, we develop in these areas, we grow and we can see our lives move forward. So, hey, if you're going to grow this year, we have these courses available. You can check them out on the website and email, find out how to get involved. Or you can talk to one of our team and someone you know in our church and say, hey, you know what? I really need some help in this particular area. So many different amazing courses that can help you. Why? Because we want to see you grow. We believe when we gather, guys, it matters. Not just that we stay the same. You know, God's plan for our lives is that we all grow and we get healthier together, as we've read from the Scriptures, from God's Word. The second thing we're talking about is firstly, growth. That happens in family. Secondly, connection happens in family, in healthy families, not perfect families, but healthy families. What do we do? We connect relationally. There's two ways that we gather as the church. And I mentioned this last week. We gather around platforms for worship and the Word but we gather around tables for deeper relationship and connection. And I want to encourage you to go, hey, I need to find my people. Who are my people? Well, I believe your people are here in your church location where you are gathered right now, uh, you know, joining with me as we discuss this, as we get this vision into our hearts. So, but you've got to find your people. We all need people. Jesus had his people the disciples he did life with. Who are your people? Find a connect group, 
uh, find your people or start a connect group or maybe restart because we're coming out of COVID and you haven't been meeting or you've been meeting on Zoom. And now it's time to go, hey, as restrictions ease, we're going to gather together around tables and we are going to grow and we're going to connect and we're going to build relationally together. Groups are so important to this community, this relational connection, and they and you find your people in a smaller group. So how do you do that? How do you do that? Well, talk again, chat to your location pastor, chat to someone you know on team, uh, one of our volunteers and say, hey, I'd like to get involved in being part of a group, in leading a connect group or restarting. And we are launching this, uh, this week in our connect groups, Pancake Tuesday. That's right. We're going to be eating pancakes together around tables, enjoying each other, hanging out, having fun, talking around all of this kind of, uh, you know, talking around fun things, but talking about Jesus. And we're doing that launching into Easter. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. We're having 40 days of deeper devotion. Some churches would call this a time of Lent which is a time of sacrifice, a time of remembrance. And we are launching it around tables, in groups, eating pancakes, talking about Jesus, growing, connecting together. It's going to be amazing. And the third element of a healthy family. Firstly, in a healthy family, we grow. We deal with issues. We get honest about our lives and say, hey, you know what? This has been a challenge for me. Maybe there are addictions and things like that you are dealing with. We have courses for that. Maybe you're struggling with your uh, your self-esteem, your identity, your value. We have courses to help you with these things so you can flourish in life. That's our, that's our dream. That's our desire for you. So we want to see you grow. We want to see you connect. Uh, and then the third area is we want to encourage everyone to serve because in a family, a healthy family, not a perfect family, everybody takes responsibility. And I'm speaking to my family right now. You don't just put your plates on the table when they're dirty. You put them in the dishwasher or you wash them up. You don't just wait for someone else to do put out the garbage. You help put out the garbage. Isn't that right? All the parents are going, amen. You clean up your room. You don't wait for mum or dad to do that when you get things out. You put them away. What's that doing, guys? That is serving. I could hear parents going, amen, amen. Serving each other, taking responsibility. Now, this is a big one because if we are going to rebuild, if we're going to rebuild, which is the season we're in as a church across all our locations across Africa, it's a rebuild time. We need an army of faithful people who say, I'm up for it, I'm involved, I'm going to serve, I'm going to get involved. Please, can I encourage you, this matters. You know, my journey in growing in my life personally, I believe in my faith journey, really accelerated when I put up my hand to serve. When it was like, hey, where's the need? What's the need? I'll I'll, I'll get involved. I've got some time. You know, I had other responsibilities, but I've got some time. Let me get involved. Uh, Nehemiah speaks about this. Nehemiah, I referenced him again on Sunday, last week, Vision Sunday. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the king of Persia and he ends up becoming the guy who leads a construction team, all right? And he wasn't the guy who was prepared for it, but his heart was right. And his spirit was right and God used him. And so he stepped into this role, probably not totally prepared, but took on the responsibility and God, you know, gifted him. God gathered people around him. So let's read Nehemiah chapter three, verse three. It says, the fish gate was rebuilt by the sons. You're going to enjoy this. I'm going to try and get these names right. Hassanah, the sons of Hassanah built the fish gate or rebuilt the fish gate. They laid its beams, put its doors, bolts and bars in place. Then Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakoz, repaired the next section. Next to him, Meshulam, son of Barakiah, the son of Meshizabal, made repairs. And next to him, Zadok, son of Banana. There you go. You didn't know Banana was in the Bible. Also made repairs. 
The next section, I want you to catch this, verse 5. The next section was, repa- was repaired by the men of Tekoa. But their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. That's kind of sad. But look at verse 6. The Jeshana gate was repaired by Joadai, or Joada, son of Pasea, and Meshelam, son of Besodea. They laid its beams and put its doors with their bolts and bars in place. Next to them, repairs were made by men from Gibeon and Mezpah, Melatiah of Gibeon and Jadon of Merinoth, places under the authority of the governor of Trans-Euphrates, Uzael or Uzael, son of Harry, Harahaya, I think, one of, the, one of the goldsmiths repaired the next section and Hananiah, one of the perfume makers, repaired, made repairs next to them. They restored Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Verse 5 is sad because verse 5 speaks of the nobles of Tekoa, not Tekai, Tekoa, who said, we're not going to help. It's beneath us. They wouldn't lower themselves to get involved. How sad. It wasn't their job profile. Maybe it was after hours. Maybe they just didn't feel led. Who knows? But the Bible puts them, sorry, God puts them in the Bible as an example of what not to do. I'm so glad God had put the Bible together before I lived and I'm sure you are too because maybe we would have been the examples. Instead, the nobles. Don't be a noble. Hey, let's not go, man, that's beneath me. Whatever it is, we need to have a heart and a spirit to serve. That's the spirit that builds a healthy church. And I believe that in this season, more than ever before, as we rebuild, we need people all across our church who put up their their hand and say, hey, what do you need? I'll do something. And I'm going to talk practically about some of those areas. But here's what I love. I love Hananiah. We read about Hananiah in verse 8. Hananiah was what? A perfume maker. Hananiah the perfume maker. What is uh, Hananiah known for? For repairing the wall. We didn't know that Hananiah could, you know, do stonework. Hananiah was a perfume maker. And here's Hananiah building the wall. And it was the best smelling wall they had. Anyway, little perfume joke right there. But I love this. These were not people who had all the skills, but they had the right heart. And I pray as a church, we will do the same. Nehemiah's team was made up of all kinds of different people, but it was the heart and spirit that mattered. People committed to each other, committed to a common vision, doing all they can to make a difference. They needed each other and so do we. I pray that together we will build with the right spirit and together continue to build God's church across Africa to the glory of God. If God's stirring your heart today, I pray you will get involved. Put up your hand and say, I want to volunteer. I want to serve. I want to get involved because those things matter. And right now, my beautiful wife is going to come and speak to you on a few moments, a few points about what the spirit of family represents. Amazing. You can stay here. You, are you going to stay? No, I'm going to. Oh, you're going to go? I'm okay, gonna, thanks, I'm going to be back. <laughs> I love that. That was amazing. And, and church, I just want to say um, we're talking around family. Family. And we're believing, church, 2022 is going to be a year where we create an even greater sense of family in our church, where people feel like, man, when I come in, we don't just have a welcome home sign, but people feel like they have come home. They feel like they're a part of it. They feel like they belong. And so family is absolutely um, everything. And I love what Phil was saying. We want people to grow. We want people to connect. And we absolutely want people to serve with all of their heart. And I just want to say building a spirit of family That's what I want to speak about. Four words, four scriptural references. How are we going to create a spirit of family in our church this year? My four words are these, conviction, care, create and continue. And I want to say just quickly, four scriptural references. I believe number one, how do we create a spirit of family? I believe we've got to have a conviction that it really matters. 
If we have a conviction that it really matters, I believe all of us, you can never leave building a church up to one pastor or one leader. It's got to be all the body. Everybody's saying, I'm in, count me in. And I think if we all have a conviction in our heart that this really matters, all of us together can see God do something absolutely beautiful. In Ephesians 1, it talks about how you and I have been adopted into His family, into God's family. So I say, if God has adopted us, we need to go out there and adopt everybody into our family, the church. And so I'm believing this year for all of us to have an even greater conviction. The family in church, the spirit of family really does matter. The second thing, second word that I really believe is important is to care, to care deeply. I mean, you know, I know if you're talking to someone or engaging with a group, you can feel, does that person care about me? Are they really interested in me? And I pray this year, 2022, that we have an even greater sense where like people feel like, man, I love coming to this church because I feel like people care deeply. And I pray that we will work towards that. There's a beautiful scripture in John 10 and it's talking about the good shepherd. It's Jesus speaking. He's our example of a good shepherd. And I wanna read it to you. It's awesome. John 10 verse 6 to 10. I'm going to read it in the message version. And it says this, Jesus told this simple story, but they had no idea what He was talking about. So He tried again. I'll be explicit then. I'll be, I'll be explicit then, Jesus says. I am the gate for the sheep. All those others are up to no good. Sheep rustlers, every one of them. But the sheep don't listen to them. He's talking about... Um, you know, people who come in and cause disruption and they're not, they're not like shepherds of the people. But then Jesus said this, but the sheep don't listen to them. I am the gate. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for and will freely go in and out and find pasture. Anyone who goes through me will be cared for. I love that thought because Jesus is our good shepherd. And He's explaining to us, hey, anyone who comes to me will be cared for. And I pray that we'll be the kind of church that makes that our benchmark, that makes that our goal, that when people come into our house, into our church, whatever location that they're in, they're gonna, fe- they're gonna sense that spirit of care, that spirit of concern, and they're gonna find green pasture. That is my prayer for our church in 2022. So number one, conviction. Number two, care. How do you build a spirit of family? Well, I believe we need to create a strategy and strategies so that everybody feels that they're cared for. I love the story of Moses when he was getting going in leadership and um, his father-in-law says to him, Moses, you're never going to be able to do this on your own. You're going to have to implement a strategy here that is going to enable a greater level of growth. And then you know how the story goes. He said, you need to get leaders of thousands and leaders of hundreds and leaders of fifties and leaders of 10. Why was he saying that? Because he knew that he could never do it on his own. And that is why it's so important that everybody jumps in and everybody cares for somebody. Because if everybody cares for somebody, then I believe we have a strategy that is going to enable everyone to feel like they're cared for. And you know, I love the story where Jesus is about to feed the 5,000. And the disciples say, we don't have enough food, send them away. And Jesus says, no, don't send them away. Let them, let them stay because we're, you're going to feed them. And then what does He do? He sits them down into groups of 50. And then He bre- takes the bread and takes the food that He has and He breaks it amongst the disciples. And then He says, now you go and feed them. And I think that's amazing because immediately God had a strategy and He created a strategy that was going to enable 5,000 people to be fed. And I'm believing 2022 that we're going to continue to create great strategies that are going to enable everyone in our church to feel like they're cared for and connected um, and beyond. Amen. And my final C, my final word um, for creating a spirit of family is to continue. Can I just say, continue to be a great person. (laughs) I know it sounds so simple, but I really believe if we make the fruit of the Spirit our goal, love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, long-suffering, self-control, that is going to be irresistible to people around us. Because I believe, you know, people are attracted to great people. People are attracted to people who are full of kindness and full of goodness. And so, you know, church, I'm believing 2022, 
that we're going to create a church that has an even greater sense of um, family, an even greater sense of connecting, an even greater sense of everyone feeling like they belong. And so I want to encourage us this year, um, have a conviction that it really matters. Let's continue to care deeply. Let's keep creating strategies that are going to um, enable everyone to be looked after. And let's continue to be great people, people full of the Spirit of God. And I believe out of that, we'll continue to create a spirit of family family in this coming year. Amen. God bless your church. Amen. <laughs> How good was that? Thank you, Lucinda. Round of applause, everybody. Such great thoughts around a spirit of family. So let me continue. Only a few more moments, guys, but we're going to talk about some practical areas here. So we're talking about family. Secondly, we're talking about forward focus. There are some big things that we are focusing on This year, the first one is Colour Conference. It's coming up. It's coming up very, very soon. It's going to be online. Girls, there is no reason why you can't be a part of it. So on the screen is coming up the information about how you can be registered for that. Grab some girlfriends and be a part of Colour Conference and you can have that experience in the location that you're at, I think. Most of them. Anyway, we are having in-room location colour conference on the Saturday uh, or you can gather with a group of girls or you can gather online, however you would like to do that. All the information's on the screen. I'm sure uh, that our amazing location pastors will give you even more information about how to be a part of it because it's going to be awesome. And I'm going to encourage the guys, as I always do, to serve the girls at the locations where we are hosting the Colour Conference on the day in March when it happens. It's going to be brilliant. Second thing, forward focus. Well, it happens every year, but is such a significant part of church life, and that is Easter. How beautiful is Easter? And this year we are going to be able to gather for Easter. We weren't able to do that last year. So praise God, we will be celebrating Jesus at Easter. Good Friday, we'll have beautiful services at all our locations. We'll receive communion together. And then on Easter Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday morning, we celebrate our risen Saviour. And then we are going to have a beautiful worship party on Easter Sunday night. Now, What we're doing this year in our global church, we are having 40 days of deeper devotion leading up to Easter. And I really want to encourage you, church, to get on board with this and to consider, hey, where can I really believe to grow in my personal relationship with Jesus uh, leading up to Easter? Maybe there's a sacrifice in some area that you can make or make, you know, something you can give up and say, okay, this I'm putting aside, uh, you know, leaning up to Easter. Maybe there's some area where you're going to go deeper uh, in regard to your understanding of Jesus and His Word. And then at Easter time, we're going to celebrate that. But we'll be going through that together, starting with Pancake Tuesday in groups gathered together around tables. That's going to be the beginning of this beautiful, amazing, I believe very significant 40 days. Second thing I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about Hillsong Kids. I talked about serving. Well, Hillsong Kids is one of the areas where we need a whole bunch of amazing people to get involved and serve our young uh, people, our kids. We believe in the next generation. And this year we are putting a special emphasis on our kids program. We are looking at how we can improve facilities, strengthen our volunteer teams and really, you know, do something special for kids and for families in general. Then I'd love to mention also forward focus worship and creative teams. Hey, maybe you're in our congregation and you're at one of our locations and you're like, man, I'd love to be involved. You play an instrument, uh, you sing, you're involved in other areas of creativity. It could be photography, could be editing, design. We need you. Uh, We have an anointing Uh, In our church, we believe for worship, to lift people into the presence of God and to also uh, show an image, if you will, of what God's church looks like on the earth. And we'd love you to be a part of that. And so we have a huge vision for our worship teams. We want to see live worship at all our locations. There is nothing better than our Uh, community gathering together, like I say, around a platform where we worship uh, together and we receive the Word. And if you are 
desiring to be part of our worship creative team, talk to uh, one of our location pastors, talk to someone. The, The team will let you know where you can go, who you can talk to after the service. But this is a big focus for us. Production people, people who serve, uh, around the, uh, you know, the sound and the lights and all of that. We need you uh, to make the church experience incredible for people. Then we have local projects that we are getting involved in, uh, as we always do. And we believe we are going to make a great difference. Uh, that's why this year, uh, we would love to see people get involved in local community projects in their different areas. And right now, we are going to hear from Mojo, we love Mojo, about uh, what is happening in Bramfontein and the local project that they are doing right there in downtown Johannesburg. Hi there, my name is Mojo and I'm part of the team in Johannesburg. Now, something that as a church we've always believed in is just how the church is there to make a difference in the lives of people. Both the people in the church, but also beyond the four walls of the church. And so there are various projects and initiatives that as a church we're embarking on. A couple of the ones that I can uh, maybe just highlight is, for example, in in Guguletu, our our church family there has really made a difference in in the Guguletu environment. And uh, something that, uh, that the church wants to do there is just continue to impact the lives of the young people uh, that are there. So something that's currently happening is a a music program that has been just initiated, which is exciting. And it's it's a means of just equipping these young people in a musical level. And something else that they want to embark on is a a scouts program. And so upskilling these young people in really, really uh, interesting ways as well. And so uh, an initiative that they're embarking on is just basically getting a minibus uh, available to church so that they can transport the young people to and from the these various programs that they've got going on. So that's one thing that's exciting that's happening in Guguletu. But also if I can highlight maybe Somerset West. Uh, uh, Somerset West has had a, a great relationship growing with uh, with Mikasa and the people in Mikasa as well. And so through that relationship, we've seen really incredible things happening. And one such initiative that, uh, that uh, Somerset West wants to embark on as well is continuing to invest in the lives of the young kids that are in uh, Mikasa. And so we're partnering with an organization there that's really just uh, in, involved in early childhood development. And you can also just find out how to be a part of that. So this is just two exciting programs out of many that our, our various locations are embarked on. And so we would encourage you as a church, hey, why don't you come and find out from your local leaders how you can be a part of what's going on right there in your local church community. Exciting times lie ahead. Let's see what difference we can make together. Well, how cool is that? And we have local projects happening at all our locations and every one of your location pastors can let you know what's happening and how you can be involved. Want to also mention, as we focus forward, we believe in the value of education. Hillsong College Africa. I spoke about it last week to our global church. Guys, we are believing to see that grow. We have launched an online virtual college, but we have plans to launch a world-class Bible college. It will be both in Century City and Cape Town, but a big focus will be in Johannesburg and we're looking for the right facility for that. Believe in God, we can launch that in 2023. So we are putting all the emphasis, efforts into that happening, uh, getting the right space this year. Very excited about that. So pray for that. Maybe you can help us in some way with all of that. But we are going to build a world-class college that's going to raise up leaders across Africa. As I mentioned last week, the average age across Africa is under 20. There are over a billion people on the continent and it is growing. We have a responsibility to be part of the answer, to be helping raise up an incredible generation of leaders who will impact not just the continent of Africa, but we believe around the world. Then we have our innovation hub. And our innovation hub started in 2020 and last year we launched in Johannesburg. Our innovation hub now has over 53 alumni. What is it? It is teaching digital skills to young people from disadvantaged backgrounds and the results have been outstanding. We have already placed 14 students in work 
with partner companies in South Africa, Europe and the USA. Nine students have found work outside of our networks. Seven students have pursued further education. So there is so much happening in this and through this program. Guys, can you believe it? We have 50 spots for this year's iHub. We had 850 applications. So we want to see this grow. Right now, we're going to hear from the amazing Lizzie Scorsana, and she's going to tell us about the journey with iHub and how it's progressing. Hi, my name is Liz, and I have the incredible privilege of looking after our Gauteng-based innovation hub. It is the exciting time of the year where we've just shortlisted from just under 900 applications, 50 incredible, driven, and passionate young people ready to take on the digital marketing world. What's extremely exciting about iHub for me personally is the fact that beyond placing these young people in incredible job opportunities across the globe as well as locally, is the fact that we get to see their lives and stories change. For instance, we have an incredible graduate from our 2021 cohort, Immaculate, who a couple of years ago could not imagine how her life could change. Intelligent, passionate and driven, but hidden in the streets of Hillbrow, she dreamed of a career bigger than herself. And today, she's part of the Group M class that started at the beginning of this year. Another example, Paula in the Western Cape, someone who dropped out of a university degree program for various reasons, including life and personal finances. Afraid to chase her dreams, thinking she's not able to do hard things. But today, a graduate of the iHub class and launching her own digital marketing business as a freelancer, but also working on different gigs from people within our network. It is exciting times. As the 2022 class begins their journey, I look forward to hearing their stories, learning about their passions and dreams, and seeing their stories unfold. And there's so many opportunities for people in our church and our network to be a part of what is taking place. Whether through coaching or mentoring, you have the opportunity to speak in the lives of young people as they go on and take a digital marketing career in a global sphere. It is truly exciting times at the Innovation Hub. Thank you, Lizzie. You are doing such an amazing job. Now, also focusing forward, we are adding rooms. We have a vision, as we've said, to build 50 churches across 50 influential cities around Africa. And we've added over the last year, Durban. Hey, hi everybody in Durban. And Amandu and Jill Stunder are now based in, in Durban and going to be building our church location there. And we are so proud of them. Nairobi in Kenya with Enoch doing a brilliant job. And we've sent Wendy and Zach also up there to help establish uh, our church family in Nairobi. Then we have Lagos in Nigeria, Daniel and Celeste, who are currently based in Sydney, Australia, but are passionate about Lagos, Daniel being from Lagos, Nigeria, married to Celeste, who's from Zimbabwe. They've just had a beautiful little baby and they will be heading there in the future. Uh, but we also have a great team there and we're gonna see God do something amazing in that part of the world. Plus Mauritius, Paul and Charlize are in Mauritius as restrictions ease there. We're gonna see church grow, establish, gathering. We've sent our best to these places and we're gonna to continue to resource them and see them grow and be established as we're believing across all our locations. We've got new facilities for some of our existing locations. Cape Town City, guys, we've got new location, new facilities for you guys, it's exciting. And Bryanston, we are going to announce very soon an amazing space that we have signed a lease for in Bryanston. It's incredible. There you go, guys, and the third area, Worship team can come up on the screen, uh, on the screen, I'm on the screen. Worship teams can come up on the stage or maybe they're gonna join after I'm completed and uh, be on the screen. Anyway, here's the third and final thing. We wanna have some fun, guys. We believe church should be enjoyed, not endured. We believe that church should be a place where there is laughter, where there is smiles, where there is fun. Psalm, uh, Psalm 100 verse two, it says, Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. And we believe that. We want to serve the Lord with gladness and enjoy the journey. We want to encourage you. 
We are creating more options for fun and togetherness before and after our services. We're going to be doing things. So stick around, get to church early, hang around after. Don't rush off, take time, uh, enjoy some nice food because we're going to be having that. And we obviously have coffee at different locations. I'm not going to get into the battle of which location has the best coffee. I know Vunderboom believe they do. I know Somerset West tend to believe they do. I'm sure now... Amandu in Durban is going to say Derbs has the best coffee. Anyway, all we know is life's too short for bad church and bad coffee. So we are creating a whole lot of moments for you to enjoy. Century City, we are up grading our space there in Century City. We know it's a bit of a process right now, but when it's completed, it is going to allow us to have more space to hang out and connect before and after services, and it's going to be beautiful. Well, there you go, guys. Thank you for being with us. We are unpacking a vision across Africa. We are believing God that this is a year of His favour upon our lives, that there is forgiveness, that there is freedom, that as we rest and are restored, there are new beginnings for our lives And we're praying and believing that for your life. I'm going to invite my wife to come back. She prayed for us at the start and I'm going to ask her to pray for us as we conclude. But let's believe we're going to build a healthy church. Amen. We're going to have healthy lives. If our lives are healthy, guess what? Those of you who are leading teams, you're going to build healthy teams. And church is built on volunteers and teams and we're so grateful for that. And if we build healthy teams, guess what? We're going to build healthy churches. And we're believing that as this year of God's favour unfolds, works its way through our lives. And so let's pray. Let me pray for your church. So Father, we thank you for the word today. Lord, we thank you for the vision, Lord. And we pray that this will be the most fruitful year, Father. I pray blessing. I pray favour. I pray the goodness of God upon our church. I pray the blessing of God upon our families. And Lord, I pray that the light of Jesus will shine in our city, our nation and our continent. Lord, we thank you that you've begun something so incredible and you are going to complete it. And Lord, we give you all the glory and we give you all the praise. And everybody said together, Amen. 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 Love you, church. We love you. We're so proud of all that God is doing across our church in Africa. And we're handing back to our worship team and to the location pastors. God bless you guys. Have the best day, the best week in Jesus' name. Well, what an incredible word that was, a word in season for each one of us. And hey, maybe you were listening right now and you're hearing about this incredible God that we've been speaking about, but maybe you don't actually know Him personally for yourself. I wanna give you a moment right now just to make a decision. This is one of the most important decisions I've ever made, actually the most important decision I've ever made in my life. It's a big decision, but it's gonna change your life. And I wanna invite you right now just to ask Jesus to come into your life, to ask Him to be the Lord and Saviour of your life. So if that's you, wherever you are, maybe why don't you raise your hand? Why don't you put your hand on your heart and just ask Jesus to come into your heart? And why don't you pray this prayer after me? You can say this, Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for me. I thank you, Lord, that you've forgiven my sins. And right now, I ask you to come into my heart, to be the Lord and Saviour of my life. I give you my life. Thank you, Jesus, my Lord, my Saviour, and my best friend. Amen. Well, hey, if you just made that decision, we want to celebrate with you. We believe in that decision so much. We actually have a gift for you. This is called our Good News Guide because you've got some good news today. And hey, this is just a little book. It's got 21 days in it, 21 pages that represent 21 days. And you can go ahead, you can click on the link just right there in the description, and you can download that digitally. And it's going to help you in your next steps because we really want this journey, not just to be a moment today, but a journey for the rest of your life. So go ahead. Don't leave today without downloading that. And hey, we have got so many incredible things coming up in our church. It's been a great service so far, but we want to let you know what is coming up. Just around the corner this Tuesday, we are having our Kingdom Builders and Vision Impactors Local Vision Night. We are so excited for this night. And hey, if you're wondering, what's a Kingdom Builder? What's a Vision Impactor? It's just a group of people in our church who believe in our church, believe in the vision of our church, and want to sow into it financially and give generously over and above their tithes. So why don't you go ahead? You can actually register again on the link below. Everything you need is right there. And we would love to see you there. And hey, are there any girls in the room? Any girls out there? Woohoo! I am so, so excited. We are just a few weeks away from our annual Colour 
conference. This is our global conference that we have just once a year that we join together with all of the sisters from all around the world. We are so excited. It's going to be online on the 11th and 12th of March. But girls in South Africa, in Africa, we are so lucky. We have got three ways that we can join in. Number one, we've got to register. Then we can join in in a local location. I'm so excited about that wherever you are. We can host a watch party at home with our friends, a group of girls, get some sisters together. It's going to be amazing. Or you can join in online. But it is going to be an incredible, incredible few days. So don't miss out. Make sure you register today. Well, hey, it has been so great joining with each one of you today. I'm so glad that we can join together for a service like this. I believe God is doing incredible things in our church and through our nation. And we just pray that you will have the most incredible week. Be blessed. Easter is so pivotal to our faith. What if we spent 40 days as a church preparing ourselves to celebrate what Easter represents? The goal is focusing on Jesus. Yeah. You can fast Netflix or social media, but you could also add something into your life. To start this 40 days of deeper devotion, we're launching it with Pancake Tuesday. So it's the tradition of Shrove Tuesday Shrove actually Tuesday. involves uh, cooking pancakes. Yeah. Listen, if I can make pancakes, anybody can make pancakes. Have some neighbours over, have some friends over and talk about Jesus. Talk about this season that we're entering into. 